I'm hoping you guys can hear that behind me. For the past 10 days, we've explored the Pacific Northwest. The flowing waterfalls, the dark forests, and the volcanoes on the distant landscape have been a fresh kind of scenery that we don't typically get to enjoy. But at least for now, we have to leave this place behind. It's time to make the push back home. taking our last glimpses of the mountain ranges here in Washington. We want an opportunity to put the Toyota into low gear, and we haven't yet found it here on this trip. Our best bet with our time that we have remaining is to make our way back through Idaho. There's one place that you can count on rugged roads. It's the Rocky Mountains. We've decided to take the scenic route home, and as the sun starts to cast long shadows this evening, we are being presented with quite an incredible show. Rolling fields of wheat isn't something that immediately comes to mind when I think of Washington State.
Okay, so we have found camp for the night. It is not as wild as you might expect. There is a toilet behind us, but this is uh, free camping. And it's either this or we drive several hours into the mountains and those mountains are part of what we're trying to see. So we just wanted to kind of call it good and um, camp here for the night because this is a spot where Blue can hang out. We're hoping for the best that nobody's gonna be out here on a Wednesday and that is the case. So now we're gonna drink local Washington cider. I bought pineapple cider. Lavender honey. Lavender honey cider. And I bought something else. I think I bought a beer. But yeah, so this is our campsite. This is uh, not as wild as we normally get into, but it actually is pretty wild because there's nobody out here. No. Other than this guy on his boat going up the Snake River. So the Snake River is the river that Lewis and Clark um, explored America on. So there's a little bit of history here. And I mean, look at this sunset. There's. Some power lines going over it of course but uh, what can you do it was a really good little find though no one's out here we got to go through these rolling wheat fields which normally isn't like what we're looking for is beautiful scenery but it was beautiful in the golden light i don't know so i like it i like oh, it good yeah i'm all right with it looks looks super pretty and uh how often do we get to camp on the snake river never so, super cool. So yeah. time for some fresh cider. Over the course of my 37 years, I've had many experiences that in the moment, I felt that I would experience it again one day. And I never know exactly why it's those moments, but I can pick them out from the rest. Profoundly emotional and impactful blips in my life's story. Someday, in my final moments, when a life worth of memories flashes before my eyes, this particular sunset, at this particular point in time, sitting here with my small family, will be one of them. We're gonna start making our way towards Idaho. And what highway were we going down? We're gonna go down 55. We went down it last time, but we weren't able to explore it because we had the trailer on the back. And this time we're gonna be able to do some more exploring, so we're excited about that. Yeah, the trailer was a big hassle last time, even though it was an off-road trailer, it just didn't work. So um, anyway, we're on our way to Washington last time heading through this area. And now we're on our way back from Washington, of course. And we've given ourselves a few days to actually explore this area because it was one of those places that you travel through on the way to somewhere else. And you're like, oh, man, this is where we should be spending some time. So mm -hmm. we're looking forward to it. We've been finding a lot of those spots on this trip, a yeah. lot of those spots that we want to come explore again. And I think that's what's really fun about doing these types of trips is being able to just stop and explore all kinds of things when you don't have plans. We really didn't have a good game plan for this trip necessarily, but because of this trip and just wandering, I've got waypoints all over the map now of places that I can go into and we could spend a week at each spot if we wanted to. So I think we're both already looking forward to next time.
more of a coffee stop, wash up in the river stop on highway, what highway? Is, are we to the highway yet? No, we're, we're on still 90, not. We're on 95. We're on 95. We washed blue up. Feels great. Uh. We are headed up a road that says that they have huckleberry pie for sale. We think this is it, and it's like more of an off-road trail than we got onto in Washington. Locked gate does not seem like it's pie territory, so I think we are gonna turn around, unfortunately. And hope that maybe that was a sign for something down the road. Maybe. Okay, we found the actual pie spot. Maybe this also Maybe. looks sketchy. This looks like an industrial yard, lumber yard. <laughs> but there's claims of pie here, so. And cherries. Oh, there? Okay. Where's the pie shop? Way back here. So we got huckleberry hand pies, two of them. A cherry pie, a peach pie, well, all hand pies. I got a whole banana bread, homemade banana bread for 10 bucks. And then I bought a homemade peanut butter cookie. This is heaven on earth to me. So we loaded up, we wanted an entire pie um, on this whole trip, but uh, reality sets in and it's like, we can't fit this in the in the actual refrigerator back there. So we just settled for hand pies. It works out pretty perfect. We found an interesting looking area along our route, and our initial plan was to set up camp early and just enjoy the evening. But after seeing that we're close to a fire lookout, of course, we don't have much choice. We have to make it to the top. I think I've ever driven to a lookout before, nor is Natalia. And so this is our first time. We're out here in Idaho, making our way down 55. I keep forgetting. Yeah, Highway 55. So we're finding the campsite, but there's a lookout. So we came up here for the night, but we are getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. It's pretty vicious. So we're gonna head out to find a campsite, but just look at this. Incredible up here. Lakes, lakes, lakes.
And now, we need to find a campsite. But it appears that at least in this part of Idaho, the trails are laid out in a particularly confusing fashion. There are a lot of tight, unmarked side routes along our path. So in hopes to find isolation, we're gonna add some more pinstripes to the FJ. Okay, so we've been driving for like an hour and we came down some roads. We we're trying to take the easy exit and there is a gate blocking this side of it. So we're gonna have to go all the way back and come back down the open way. Okay, we got to camp super late tonight, like 10 o'clock. We were messing around trying to find like a perfect campsite. And there's a lot of roads here that aren't necessarily marked correctly. And so like that blocked road we found slowed us down for a long time. And then we kind of missed out on some of our campsite opportunities. We've had a lot of late nights on this trip. We have, we're not very good at picking a spot. Also not sure about grizzly bears here, if that's a thing. Um, I know they probably are in Idaho somewhere. I just don't know if they're in this part of Idaho. So I think I'm going to take a little more care with our food or our trash tonight. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do something to deal with it a little bit better than I normally would. But uh, just in case, because I really don't want to wake up with a grizzly bear outside of our tent. Yeah. I'm hoping you guys can hear that behind me. I'm gonna have to set up the audio recorder to get this too. But there's like, here in Idaho, there's some very bizarre sounding noises. I'm pretty sure it's cattle, some sort of a cattle operation. But with it echoing through the mountains, it sounds so trippy. They're sheep. It's so hard to tell. That's what it sounds like. There might be... They might be driving, the dogs might be driving them this way. Maybe that's what the cowboy camp was about that we saw. Yeah, maybe sheep herders out here. Super creepy though at camp. Now we Now it's a little more clear. But for a while we could not understand what that was. I thought it was like a boat in the distance or something because there's a lake near, but it's not the case. So anyway. Crack into this banana bread. This morning is a bittersweet morning. It's the last full day we have before we have to return home. You want another one? Are you sure? It's delicious though. For the most part, I think a lot of our trip this entire time has been a very beginner friendly route because you could have done this in a completely stock uh, four wheel drive. You would want four wheel drive and know how to air your tires down. Aside from that, I mean, really. Well, we got into some stuff yet last night that was a bit. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. For somebody who's new to this, I think they could have done all of these routes. You just probably wouldn't have taken a few of the risks that we would have. But I do think like the whole coast, just driving down the coast, finding places to camp, that was easy. Uh, driving through the BDR, that was very easy. 
and uh, it really wasn't that challenging. It was mostly just old dirt roads and potholes. It's a different kind of travel than what we do in Colorado. We're covering a lot of ground and we're getting to see a lot of different terrain through a lot of different states and it's been a pretty cool experience. Yeah. It's quite nice. It's quite nice. It feels like we should just be getting started, but here we are towards the end of the journey. Soon enough, we'll be back to our normal life. Going to work, clocking in, clocking out, daily chores, sleeping, and repeating. I think that's the big draw to this kind of lifestyle. These trips almost make you forget about your day-to-day -day responsibilities and lets you live more in the individual moments and lets you get a chance to enjoy what really matters. I've learned some stuff about traveling this time as far as uh, trying to plan these routes because I do try to plan interesting routes for the sake of making these videos. We're a little too ambitious on uh, that we could just travel down a highway and then find an off-road route and go up that because as we all know, off-road routes can take a whole day in themselves. And part of the problem with this trip, not really a problem, but having the Overland Expo right in the center of it sounded like a good idea but it ended up really breaking up our time to where we were on the coast, and then we had to get back to Central Oregon. And then from Central Oregon, it's like, do we drive all the way back to where we just were, which was kind of a disappointment because it was so trashed, or do we go somewhere else towards Washington? And we did that, and then it was beautiful, but then at the same time, it was like kind of boring trail. By the time we got into the interesting trail, we had to start heading back this way. So nothing really worked out, but I kind of feel like that's part of the story here. I guess what I'm getting at is that this trip was not a bunch of crazy off-roading, but it was a bunch of beautiful places and I really enjoyed seeing it all. I know in Idaho there is crazy camping, wild camping, off-road, crazy trails, but this trip didn't work out that way. And I want you guys to understand that even on your own trips, if you're, if you're a newcomer to this kind of thing, you don't need to be up into the mountains just destroying your vehicle to have an incredible time. I can tell you right now, the van lifers probably see more cool stuff than the vast majority of our population, and most of them are two-wheel drive. So there's a story to be told in everything, and don't think that you need to do the craziest stuff to have an awesome adventure, because this last two weeks has been truly amazing, and I don't know how to put it into words how much I appreciate that some of you guys are watching these videos. Thank you so much for sticking around for the story and for the conclusion, because just watching a video all the way through really does help YouTube see the value in these kinds of videos. And if you'd click the like button, comment below, it all helps tremendously for YouTube to basically see that people care about these videos. And I am trying to do more of this type of content in the future, more crazy off-road content in the future, and uh, just better and better everything in the future.
The sun is beginning to set against the Idaho mountains, and we are both grateful to have such a beautiful place to spend our last evening. A golden sunset, a fantastic dinner, staring at the stars, and then we're off to bed and on to new adventures. So we're gonna do some nighttime photography and then we're gonna climb up in the tent and that is about it for this trip. We're gonna make the beautiful drive out through Idaho, but we gotta get back to Colorado tomorrow. This trip really goes to show that you don't need max tracks and you don't need a winch to enjoy this kind of stuff. Beginners, there's plenty of stuff to explore out there. Start small. You don't have to invest a ton into this kind of thing. And um, just really get out there and find different places to explore in your state because no matter what you see on YouTube, not everything is like Colorado where you need aggressive everything. This has been a nice change of pace. Driving on the beaches has been incredible. Driving on forest roads that are just forgiving and uh, not beating us up all day. It's been pretty nice. So uh, for those that have stuck around to the end of the video, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's it.